Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at an interesting topic that we simply have to understand nowadays. It's third party lenses. So let's dive right into it. Now, if you want to understand what is the soul of photography, it's basically the lenses. Lenses defines your color palette. Lenses define how it feels. Lenses define the field of view. Lenses define depth of field. So if you want to understand what is giving the art into the photography, it's basically your lenses. It's an integral part of interchangeable lens camera. Now, if you didn't have interchangeable lens camera, you still can get a very good lens only problem would be like it will be you have to buy something that exactly suits your need or you will be end up stuck with something that you are not gonna enjoy now this mentality that uh, lenses are very specific specifically tailor-made allows for a right tool for the right job and before you buy any interchangeable lens camera system i would urge you please understand your own needs what you're gonna need and check whether those lenses are available or not that's why i don't recommend everybody to go buy Fuji films. You can check my video out there. It's like that's the best APS-C camera, and uh, cost-wise, it's pretty awesome. And nobody like uh, Nikon, Canon, or uh, basically Sony will release an APS-C that will beat it simply because that will compromise their full-frame system. So, but again, I would not recommend to buy that. Why? Simply, it does not have every single lens that you would need. Now, uh, if you are a photographer, if you are a budding photographer, if you this is what you want to do in your life, as in like this is what your profession is, lenses will represent much more uh, than uh, in terms of your cost. Lens will represent a much larger chunk than your camera. Basically, the body, camera body only would be very cheap. Even to give you a very simple idea, I have Canon 800D, which is not cheap by any margin. It's like uh, 50 to 56,000. Now, now it might be cheaper since I have bought it one and a half year ago. But I only put two lenses on this. So the one Canon 70 to 300, basically one Canon this lens. This already costed me uh, 30, almost 35,000, and another Sigma uh, 17 to 55. That's also costed me 30. Now, as you can see, I already exceeded the money I spent on my camera body, and not to mention more memory cards and other things. So, all things combined. If you are talking about finances, you need money for lenses, not for the body. Like, and that's why if you keep hearing people say like people will cannot jump system, cannot change the system or switch the system. This is what they are referring to. You might have a Nikon uh, sports photographer who have uh, like, you know, 50, 60 lakhs or uh, like, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands worth of lenses. But body is for him. Like even if somebody stole a very expensive body is like, okay, I'll just buy a new one. So be mindful. Money wise lenses matter and lenses are the basically soul of it like your color palette the color science they don't matter that much if you have good lens it's gonna uh, give a very good image if you have a shitty lens on the best camera body you can find you will still have a shitty lens so lenses are the primary means of photography so let's understand the first party lenses now this is how camera manufacturers make their money now you might be like okay what about the camera body they are not supposed to make that much money out of each camera body they sell but each lens they sell basically camera body to nikon or to canon it's a low margin product as in if they sell one piece of it they will make very little amount of money but if they sell one piece of lens they will make a lot more money out of it uh, so lenses are generally what they call high margin product that's why it's so expensive and and, uh, to dip, to make sure they support the system to make sure they don't rechange it that's why they uh, make sure the lenses are very very uh, well built in terms of class in terms of durability and in terms of support now support is very crucial let's say you are in an olympic event and you can easily find there are booths of uh, basically nikon and canon so if you have a nikon or canon lens they can literally uh, ala, let's say your lens stopped working you can simply go there and they will give you a spare so and sony also started to do this this pro support basically so camera manufacturer tries to make the most out of their lenses not from camera body so if the camera body says let's say five thousand dollar cost it must have costed them upwards of four thousand dollar but if there is a five thousand five thousand dollar lens the body must have costed them upwards of let's say uh, 2000 so basically a lens is a high margin product and uh, if you want to follow the money trail lenses is what making them money so but they are not blindingly charge you it's not like okay i'm just gonna charge as much as i need to they do give you certain benefits and be mindful because lenses are something like you buy and invest they don't have quick cycles so basically let's say uh, 
this is a uh, version 2 of this lens uh, there is a version 1 the gap between these two lenses are more than 5 years generally that's the gap like that's the minimum that you can uh, expect to wait so uh, if you are about to buy a lens that is like let's say you bought this one you don't have to be like okay I should wait for next generation yeah the extension will come after 5 years or even longer than that because these have very very slow cycles so if you even if let's say a camera manufacturer released a lens which is just bad let's say it's just bad it just doesn't focus properly they will try to fix it they will try to do revamp sorry but they will not re release the next version of it it's not like a camera body where you can like expect a new body every year or every two years this takes more than five years so be aware of that now if you are about to buy a lens and you are seeing that it is already six or seven years old be patient so uh, these are the pros of that uh, you know whole deal this will work with whatever you have but it does come with a consequence very severe consequence it is blindingly expensive as in like you cannot justify the cost in any way shape or form because okay it has good build quality but that should increase the cost uh, by a little margin it should not be like okay um, it's not like they're giving you titanium heck uh, canon's uh, l glass are very fragile now you're like wait a minute wait a minute isn't that like built like a tank yes but have you ever noticed that you will never find canon l glass in international space station like uh, nasa flat out rejected uh, canon's uh, glass system simply because canon uses what we know as fluoride glass element now fluoride is flawless if you want to talk about optical quality fluoride is flawless however that puppy is very sensitive to temperature sense that's why their lenses are coated white if you see co white coated lenses that's why they are coating it white to make sure that uh, fluoride does not get through a temperature fluctuation like it and not to mention it's very uh, very shattery kind of material so if they put a lens in uh, you know space shuttle while it's going up yeah the shock will uh, shatter the lens that's why Nikkor lenses are generally found in uh, basically international space station so be mindful uh, now does not mean that L glasses are bad glasses they are very good at what they do but be aware of it there is a reason why they are painting it white not to like you know stand out of the crowd they have to paint it because if they paint it black the temperature will change and it will crack the element so that's why like uh, many people find these sort of glasses very expensive like uh, to give you a context like this lens uh, if I buy it from Sigma or Tamron I would have spent upwards of 10,000 now if I bought from Canon like I this this is upwards of 40 so does this give me that kind of magical performance compared to those no so it is very expensive it is very hard to justify so why not everybody should not buy, uh, you know buy third party lenses one very simple reason third party lenses are not supported by the manufacturers basically uh, in the case of Nikon and Canon they are reverse engineered that's why uh, many times you see everybody talking about USB docks now what does that mean is that electronic communication between the lens and the uh, camera body it's proprietary like Canon has their own and Nikon has their own now when Sigma or Tamron or Voigtlander or Tikona they try to make their own lenses they take their uh, old lenses and try to figure it out how they made it it's a reverse engineer product benefit is cheap side effect uh, it is cheap because they are not paying royalty for it but uh, the consequence is that if new model of a camera body comes out your lenses might not work even though it's like uh, let's say you had a Sigma 8 into 7, uh, 35 basically a very popular lens and uh, you had Canon uh, T3i and you're like oh awesome now I'm gonna upgrade to T5i uh, your lenses will stop out of focusing properly like it's not gonna it's not like it's not gonna work but you will need to upgrade the firmware in it to make sure that it works properly because it was not properly supported the camera manufacturer does not support it now because the camera manufacturer have access to not only the whole lens data they also know the proprietary communication if let's say they released a new camera body that has let's say eye autofocus and for that reason they have to change the autofocus algorithm if they have a, a scenario where one of their own uh, Nikkor lenses are not working or uh, their own L glasses are not working they will write a patch code in the firmware of the camera itself so if you buy the camera you don't have to worry about anything it's like uh, it will work with every single first party lens so this reverse engineering is uh, something to be uh, mindful of now Sony uh, has opened their lens mount to almost everybody so Sony does not have to worry about too much uh, but it is a, a very serious concern when you're talking about Canon and Nikon
Now, low quality control has always been the problem with uh, third party manufacturers. Now, some suffer more, some suffer less. Like Sigma has been so bad, like uh, there is also upgraded version of this 18 to 35, which is like from 100, uh, 70 to 100 or something like that. Basically, it was so bad flat out, it did not order focus properly because the communication wasn't uh, working. But some people uh, who did the YouTube reviews, they got awesome. Other people, they tried to re replicate it and they had terrible because the quality control between lens uh, each version versions of the lens is not very well managed they can't afford to do that because Nikon and Canon are overcharging so much they do try to give you a good deal these puppies like they, uh, they try to do what we call corner cutting so best place to cut corner is quality control so you may have a lens that is like whoa this is the best lens ever and let's say for some reason you lost it or it broke and you're like okay I'm gonna buy the same version same lens basically and uh, you bought the second copy and now it has optically misaligned element this sort of thing happen it's much more prevalent much more common uh, in third party than it is in first party now there is no scenario where it's like oh there is never any mistake in first party but it's much less and not to mention first party are generally well supported i can go to a canon shop and be like okay bro this lens is not working they will try to try to fix it sigma and tamaron and uh, tokina good luck with that void lander good luck finding any vendor for that so that low quality control per piece wise is kind of uh, tricky so you should check your lens before you buy it as in like try to get it a uh, lens that you directly buy from shop sometimes it's a simple matter of upgrading the firmware that fixes the problem especially with this and that is why sigma is also selling their uh, usb dock in that dock you will upload the schematics basically the firmware of the lens itself to make sure it works with newer camera this headache is there now it won't be with sony nor it will be for micro four third because micro four third is an open format but it is dying so i'm not too worried about it but it is very cost competitive to give you a context of it there, this lens i am very fond of right now it's a tamaron 24 to 70 and it's a g2 g1 was kind of good but the g2 is like a, cream of the crop it's a uh, half the cost of what you have uh, available from Nikon and Canon side here's the deal this has vibration compensation but Nikon and Canon side they did not give you vibration compensation so not only they are giving you a better feature they are giving you optical performance that is almost as good as those lenses and you are saving boatload of money while getting one extra feature so gone are the days where uh, third party lenses were like okay this is a cheap alternate now they are a proper competition to first party lenses if they like all these camera manufacturers uh, like uh, do not take notice of this uh, they will slowly end up taking much larger chunk of their you know profitable pie and that's why sony flat out opened their mount is like uh, they figured out like if they want to make lenses that g master lenses that are like very expensive uh, not everybody is gonna buy it and there is no point in like you know people buying your sony camera and up, uh, you know putting a lens that does not work very well uh, it's gonna you know everybody's gonna think sony does not work well they don't care like the lenses is third party so for this reason please be mindful of this like third party lenses are generally cheaper but sometimes they have very weird corner cost cutting so i would be uh, remiss if i said you should not never buy a third party lenses like my primary lens is a third party lens but please be thorough about it please check it, uh, things thoroughly and if you want to figure out how long a lens will last simply see how many second hands are available if a lot of second hand that are very old as in like five eight ten years working year old that means the lens is good so this is a very simple understanding that i want to impart on you it's like just take a deep breath third party has a reason to be good and bad and so is first party good and bad check uh, you know basically pick your poison so this was my presentation on third party lenses i hope this opened your eyes to some new opportunities and i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please leave a like and if you didn't don't worry about it you can dislike it i would urge you to leave a comment on my video and uh, please subscribe share it amongst your friend hashtag s2t and uh, press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching